Last week in a presentation, I recommended several films to help you understand scripture in a culturally plausible way. These were educational films and recreational films. What about recreational films that are explicit treatments of biblical stories or of the life of Jesus? Jerusalem, the faithful city, she that was full of justice, has become a harlot! Well, I cannot think of any such production today that offers culturally informed depictions that in turn will help a reader better understand the Bible. The tree is known by its fruit. I can think of four excellent recreational films that explicitly concern Bible stories and offer a much needed and profound theological challenge to Christians living today. Essentially, they challenge our theological complacency. Two of these films are by Jewish atheist filmmaker Darren Aronofsky. Noah is a profound retelling in Midrash of Genesis chapters 1 through 11. With a little help from first Enoch, Noah has been slandered as the most unbiblical movie ever made. That's untrue, folks. In fact, Noah is surprisingly more faithful to its biblical source than many other films that are purported to be. It offers a fantastic opportunity to look at the mystery of God and how people grapple over it. In the movie Noah, the titular character is told, The choice was put in your hands because the Creator put it there. He asked you to decide if we human beings were worth saving. How true it is that we human beings must choose how we want to understand, interpret, update, and live out the mystery of God. Aronofsky's Mind-Bending Mother is another challenging film for American Christians to watch. For anyone who thinks they understand salvation history, especially through the lens of a Scott Hahn or a Jeff Cavins, they should have no problem recognizing the storyline of Mother. But this movie offers a damning indictment about how religion has played a significant role in distorting God and God's love through imperial cruelty and the tremendous ecological destruction the Western world has committed against creation. Mother in many ways offers us a meditation on Father Richard Rohr's dictum, your image of God creates you. And if you, the believer, happen to be a narcissistic, centripetal individualist, well, that will impact your theological image of God. Another brilliant atheist filmmaker, animator Nina Paley, offers us yet another theologically challenging film, Seder Masochism. Paley, an avowed open source activist, imaginatively gives us a run through of the traditional Jewish Passover Seder. She combines Haggadah with 20th century popular music, including Louis Armstrong, Led Zeppelin, and The Beatles. Irreverent in most unorthodox depictions of the Exodus story and characters, and an unscripted personal dialogue between herself and her late Jewish dad, Hiram. Paley animates herself as a black sheep and her late father Hiram as God, seen traditionally as a male with a long flowing white beard. And this God that she shows so often in Seder masochism is undeniably the God of Americans. Money. Paley offers us so much to think about in Seder masochism. She draws from feminist commentaries of scripture and contrasts the traditional male god with a much kinder goddess. She even gives us a profoundly beautiful goddess creation myth. Paley reminds us that goddess worship was brutally suppressed by Israelite reformers in Old Testament times. 
Seder masochism raises important questions. After all, women are equally human to men, no? Then why are they silenced and sidelined and marginalized in scripture? Why does the same happen in hierarchical religion? Where are the female voices in the human expression? Why the state of women in the history of the great monotheistic traditions? Paley subverts the traditional take, exposing popular imagery of Moses and Yahweh as being more at home with bloodthirsty villains and control freaks. The real protagonist of Seder masochism is the goddess. Seder masochism also delves into other critical religious issues, such as why do so many bloodbaths stain the history of religion? Why all this genocidal hatred and slavery? Why so much cruelty tied up with religion, war, and empire? It is so cheap and easy to dismiss Aronofsky's mother and Paley's satyr masochism as being sacrilegious. But the real problems these films raise don't disappear with our cheap grace dismissals. Real faith acknowledges the ugly side and goes ouch when others hurt. Instead of condemning or attempting to cancel voices like Darren Aronofsky and Nina Paley, maybe we should instead be grateful to them? Not all atheists are silly scratch-off fundamentalists, folks. Many are, but not all. Some atheists are mystics, even holy atheists. They present a challenging witness to the world, and a righteous doubt of counterfeit truth offered sacrosanct through complacent religious tradition. With the heteroloquy of these artists, Aronofsky and Paley, we Christians might be spurned to change and grow in good ways, reforming and refining our ideas of holy and absolute mystery. Finally, I'd like to offer you an excellent Jesus film. Jesus Christ Superstar, a 1973 movie. It is based on the rock opera of the same name by lyricist Tim Rice and composer Andrew Lloyd Webber. As far as Jesus movies go, Jesus Christ Superstar is at the top of my list. Why? Primarily it is because of two critical aspects that should be kept in mind whenever watching the film. The first is that Jesus Christ Superstar is not a movie directly dealing with Jesus or Judas Iscariot or Mary Magdalene, or the Twelve, or other Gospel characters. Instead, Jesus Christ Superstar is about a group of young hippie actors reeling in the social changes of the late 1960s, meanwhile trying to put on a passion play. Grappling to discover their characters, these Western boomers draw extensively from the Jesus biographies produced by the new quest for the historical Jesus and all the social changes impacting them, such as the Civil Rights Movement, the Vietnam War, Richard Nixon, sexual liberation, etc. In that sense, Jesus Christ Superstar is so much more honest than all the other Jesus films. Jesus Christ Superstar's other saving grace is that instead of telling us who Jesus is and what he means, it asks. This movie asks rather than tells. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, who are you? What have you sacrificed? Jesus Christ Superstar, do you think you're what they say you are? These are essential, gutsy questions Christians cannot afford not to ask, hiding behind a shield of verbal orthodoxy. If you want to grow in a relationship with Christ, the songs of Jesus Christ Superstar offer a great exercise regimen. So, 
I've given you several recreational films explicitly related to the Bible that challenge our complacent orthodoxy. Noah, Mother, Seder Masochism, and Jesus Christ Superstar.